It's pretty wild the number of nations that is in support of the Palestinian people and looking to stop Israel and their genocide against them. You have over you have 153 nations that want the Israeli government to stop, and then you have a couple that are still in support actively supporting the Israeli government, especially the United States, who is just continually giving them uh, money and weapons to con to continue their genocide. Uh, this just shows who's in the wrong. This would be like having, you know, the entire world against the Nazi German government, while you have a couple nations still in support. Who's in the wrong there? You can obviously tell who's in the wrong. So far, the 84-page petition, which was filed by South Africa, has been joined by 16 other nations. The brief makes clear that genocidal intent can be inferred from the nature and conduct of Israel's military operation in Gaza, for example, by failing to provide or ensure essential food, water, medicine, fuel, shelter, and other humanitarian assistance for Gazans, by forcing the evacuation of 85 percent of the population from their homes and killing over 21,000 people, including nearly 8,000 children. Of course, those numbers... How can the Israeli government claim to be fighting in self-defense when so many kids are being... You can't claim that these kids are Hamas agents, especially the babies. They have no idea what's going on. Numbers have grown in the weeks since South Africa's petition was filed. It also cites the mass murder of healthcare workers and journalists who are being killed at, quote, a rate significantly higher than has occurred in any conflict in the past hundred years. And yeah, it's a war crime to kill journalists and medical workers and stuff like that. But the Israeli government is pretty okay with they even admitted to killing one in Lebanon uh, with an airstrike. There is videos of uh, uh, a team of journalists but from Al Jazeera that were attacked by an, an Israeli tank. One of the journalists died. Uh, the reason why the Israeli government doesn't like these journalists reporting in favor of the Palestinian people is because they will expose the Israeli government for what they're actually doing, committing a genocide. Reports of summary executions of unarmed people, including Israeli hostages waving white flags. Of course and the Israeli government is not unknown to shoot people waving white flags. They don't care if a person is waving a white flag or not. And they're going to kill them. And this is why three Israeli hostages were killed by the IDF, because they consider anybody, no matter who they are, to be a threat to them, especially if they're waving a white flag. Of course, the intensity of the bombing campaign, which outstrips the bombing of Dresden in World War II, and which features so-called dumb heavy bombs with enormous blast radiuses being dropped in one of the most densely populated places in the world. Those are also cited as... Yeah, the Israeli government is using dumb bombs in order to indiscriminately bomb Gaza, which means civilians are going to be killed, and the Israeli government does know this. as evidence of genocide. If, if South Africa's petition is successful and it is able to meet the standard of showing that genocide is plausible, Israel, which is a signatory of the Genocide Convention, could be called upon to stop its siege of Gaza immediately. Now, whether or how international law would be enforced is a different question. As the New York Times... The, 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 the nations of the world should come together and send forces and aid to the Palestinian uh, people uh, because without a without like an opposing military force, the Israeli government is not going to stop. If they see that there is, a, you know, troops from around the world protecting the Palestinians, they would be forced to stop. Otherwise, they're going to have to go to war with the entire world. 
Times noted Israel completely ignored a 2004 non-binding opinion from the ICJ that security barriers in the West Bank were illegal and should be dismantled. They're still up. But certainly a finding from a binding international court that Israel has committed genocide would significantly increase the political pressure on Joe Biden to stop facilitating Israel's siege with American weapons and billions of dollars. Yeah, because um, once the ICJ rules against the Israeli government, because that, that is what's going to happen. It's obvious that the Israeli government's can decide, especially with the rhetoric by like Bibi Netanyahu and other uh, ministers in the Israeli government. Um, Joe Biden will be shown as the type of person he actually is, which is a right wing fascist, because if you support the right wing government, uh, that the right wing Israeli government and the far right wingers there in their genocide, you're definitely not a left winger, especially when you're self proclaimed as a Zionist, which is right wing ideology. And military aid. The pressure is already mounting. Al Jazeera reported a shift in tone from Israel's prime minister as the ICJ hearings approached. Netanyahu put out a statement yesterday insisting that Israel has no intention of occupying Gaza. Note that forced mass displacement can be considered a genocidal act. However, uh, Bibi is only coming out and saying that the Israeli government has no intent of occupying Gaza is because he wants to make it look like he's not a genocide, even though he's called for... Uh, the Israeli government to kill every single man, woman, and child in Gaza. However, it's important that you know that Bibi's recent statements are in direct contradiction with a number of statements from senior Israeli officials that are cited in South Africa's 84-page petition, statements that speak directly to the question of Israel's intent to ethnically cleanse Gaza. For example, on October 9th, Israel's defense minister declared a complete siege on Gaza, barring electricity, food, water, and fuel on the grounds that Israel was fighting human animals. He went on to say that, quote, Gaza won't return to what it was before. We will eliminate everything. If it doesn't take one day, it will take a week. It will take weeks or even months. We will reach all places. President. Her so you have one of the ministers calling uh, Palestinians animals and wanting to siege Gaza serving them of any kind of resource, that is a genocide. Uh, there is no way around that. Herzog erased the distinction between militants and civilians, saying it's an entire nation out there that is responsible. It's not true, this rhetoric. To say that every single Palestinian is responsible is, and that they should be punished, only a war crime. They're even considering the babies and kids to be terrorists and that they should be killed. Rick about civilians not aware, not involved is absolutely not true. Israeli Minister for National Security Ben Gavir said on November 10th, oh, to be clear, when we say that Hamas should be destroyed, it also means those who celebrate, those who support, and those who hand out candy. They're all terrorists and they should be destroyed. The Israeli Minister of Energy, which means what again? Like who who is doing that? Like they're just saying like what? Basically, all Palestinians are in Hamas when that is not the case. The infrastructure tweeted that all the civilian population in Gaza is ordered to leave immediately. Israeli Minister of Heritage said after a month of bombardment, quote, the north of the Gaza Strip, more beautiful than ever. Everything is blown up and flattened, simply a pleasure for the eyes. We must talk about the day after, in my mind, we will hand over lots to all those who fought for Gaza over the years. That's him openly announcing an intent to parcel out. Yeah, so you have people talking about taking Palestinian land and giving it to Israeli people. That is uh, calling or advocating or supporting the displacement of Palestinians and taking their land for other people. That is a genocide. A forced displacement is a genocide. Palestinian land to the soldiers who destroyed it. 
The Israeli Minister of Agriculture announced, quote, we are now actually rolling out the Gaza Nakba. Deputy Speaker of the Knesset and member of the Foreign Affairs and Security Committee said, now we all have one common goal, erasing the Gaza Strip from the face of the earth. Israeli army res Yeah, so how can the Israeli government say they're not advocating for a genocide when you have so many of the ranking ministers calling for a genocide? Reservist Major General Gloria Elands wrote, people should be told that they have two choices, to stay and to starve or to leave. He later told a newspaper that the only way to see the hostages alive again was to, quote, create a severe humanitarian crisis in Gaza. He's repeatedly called. Yeah, so people, Israeli ministers are continually calling for a genocide of the Palestinian people, and there can be no of it because they're doing it on record calling for the genocide of the Palestinian people. For Gaza to be made uninhabitable on social media, addressing the controversy around the Al-Shifa hospital bombing, he said, quote, I hope that the head of the CIA got an explanation of why this is necessary and why the U.S. must ultimately back even an operation like this even if there are thousands of bodies of civilians in the streets afterward. These quotes go on for pages and pages and pages in South Africa's petition. Now, even if you... Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that South Africa uh, used the quotes by the Israeli minister because there is no way of the Israeli government being able to deny that they have the intent of committing a genocide when pretty much every single one of their ministers is calling for a genocide in some way. If you discount these admissions, Israel's claim that it does not intend to permanently displace Gazans are undermined by the choice to destroy 60% of all housing stock in Gaza, including by conducting controlled demolitions. One might ask whether there's a real threat of Hamas hiding in a given building if soldiers have time to set charges, walk away a distance, and blow up a building while recording it for social media. The yeah, there's definitely no Hamas agents there. Yeah, if they're just, you know, casually walking into a building and setting up charges. Yeah, it, it's like when they supposedly arrested a bunch of Hamas agents holding guns and then showing them uh, surrendering their guns while they were, like, half-stripped. Yeah, that was obviously, like, a PR stunt. The infrastructure and foundations of Palestinian life have also been deliberately targeted, according to the petition, including court buildings, legislative buildings, the public library, universities, Christian and Muslim religious sites, museums, and the central archive containing thousands of historical documents and national records. Moreover, you would think a lot of the Christian Zionists in the United States would be against the Israeli government destroying, you know, churches and Christian artifacts in Palestine, but they don't seem to care whatsoever. Reported plans to flood the tunnels of Gaza with seawater may have the effect of contaminating Gaza's aquifers and soil for the long term, undermining the ability to grow any crops there, literally salting the earth like medieval armies, making the land uninhabitable. Rep yep, this is just another way for the Israeli government to raise Gaza without actually like burning it to the ground and covering with salt. Used to do back in the old days. Reports that Israel is in talks to export the Gazans to the Congo also don't exactly scream right of return. Now, the South African report also notes the consequences of Israel denying health care to Gaza, specifically citing five premature babies that were left to die and to decompose in an ICU, along with 40 kidney patients at Al Shifa Hospital.